this is not about a person or a party. It's about America. It's about the country, which is the hope of the earth. We're going to keep it strong and restore America's greatness. Now I know that the people of America have a choice. They can choose the current incumbent. He represents the status quo. If we re-elect Barack Obama, you know exactly what we're going to see. Outside, outside there were some protesters. I love a few protesters, not too many, but a few. And, uh, and they had signs that said four more years, chanting four more years. I guess the question, if I'd have had a little time with them, I'd have said, do you really want four more years where only half of college graduates can get a job or a job consistent with a college degree? surrender. He said that with regards to his first four years, why he gets an incomplete. And as you understand, when you get an incomplete, it means you have to take the course over again. No. In this case, we're not going to let him take the course over again. We're going to get someone new to guide this country. Now, the country faces major challenges. You know that we face massive debt, trillion dollar deficits. We face a Washington that's broken, that can't get the job done. The president today threw He can only change it from outside. Well, That's we're going right to give him that chance in November. He's going to stay. I can change Washington. I will change Washington. We'll get the job done from the inside. Republicans and Democrats will come together. He can't do it. His slogan was, yes, we can. His slogan now is, no, I can't. This is time. to the president who can't get change. And the American people understand it. I couldn't believe it when I heard him today, or heard about it. I didn't actually hear about his own voice, but I heard it from the reports. They came out and they said the president of the United States says he can't change Washington from the inside. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. No wonder he's had such a hard time over these last four years. His first two years, he had a Democrat House, Democrat Senate. He got to do whatever the heck he wanted to, but he says he can't change it from the inside. Well, I will. I'll get the job done. We'll change what. Now, there's something that he did put in place from the inside. And I hope people right here understand how bad news this thing is. He put in place something called Obamacare. And there are a couple of features of Obamacare I hope the people of Florida understand. One is he had to find some way to pay for it. The rules in Washington are such that if you add something that costs a lot more money, and Obamacare does, you got to find a way to pay for it. So he raised taxes by $500 billion. But then this, I hope the people in Florida understand this. He cut Medicare by $716 billion. And if I'm president of the United States, we're going to put that $716 billion back into Medicare, back into the care of our seniors. That $716 billion represents $1.4 billion in Sarasota County alone. Think of that. And what it means, the, the, the Medicare actuary and the Medicare trustees looked at what's going to happen by virtue of this $716 billion cut to Medicare. What they say it's going to do is that about 4 million people who have Medicare Advantage are going to lose it. And in addition, about 15% of America's hospitals and nursing homes will stop taking new Medicare patients. What he has done to Medicare to pay for Obamacare is wrong. I will reverse it. I will save Medicare and protect it for our seniors in a day and our seniors in tomorrow. And so with all the challenges we face in our economy, with all the challenges we face around the world, 
The president came to give the address to the American people at his convention in Charlotte, and, and, and I expected him to lay out a vision to describe his plan for getting America working again. Perhaps it had been two steps or five steps or some ideas. In fact, after his long speech was finished, there was no plan. He has no plan to make Washington work. He says he can't change it from the inside. He has no plan to get our economy working again. Well, I have a plan. I have five steps that are going to get this economy going, create 12 million new jobs, save Medicare, and get our incomes rising again. There are five things, and you've probably heard them by now. If you haven't, I want you to learn them. Number one, to get this economy going in a big hurry, immediately, we're going to take advantage of our energy resources, our coal, Going to government. 
Now in a setting like that, what I want to do is bring the tax rates down so small business is able to keep more of its money so we can hire more people. But the president... to raise taxes, to take it from 35% to 40%, that's the federal income tax. I will not let that happen because jobs is my priority. And then you have all those Washington bureaucrats and regulators that think their job is to crush business. Look, a lot of you have had the chance of working in business. A lot of you work in businesses today. That's where your jobs come from. Time and time again, the people across America tell me that they feel that their businesses are being crushed by government. The regulators are making it harder for them to carry out their enterprise. I can tell you this, we have to catch the bad guys, but we also have to make sure regulators encourage the good guys. I will encourage small business, and I'll start off by telling small business people, you did build it. ago, stood up and said, you know, if you have a business, you didn't build that, someone else did that. And I think the reason he said that was it laid the groundwork for his philosophy. His political philosophy is one of redistribution. The idea, the idea being that the role of government is to take from some people and to give to others. Now, I'm not talking about people in need, of course. We always care. Americans are big-hearted, compassionate people. We care for those in need. But the, idea of, but the idea of redistribution, which is we're going to take wealth from some and redistribute it to others, that's a foreign concept that's never been part of the American experience. This is a land where economic freedom has allowed people to pursue their dreams and in doing so and achieving success, they lift us as a nation, they give us jobs. I will not apologize for success here. Yes. And I will never billion dollars. What you have today is a president who believes in redistribution as a political and economic philosophy. What you have today is a president who says he can't fix Washington from the inside. It's time to get a president who understands what it takes to get America working again, and I do. I am. The question is whether America is going to become like Europe. larger and larger and larger that takes more and more away from us and borrows more and more from China and others and passes those burdens on to the next generation. This is not the America that we know. That will not create the jobs and the rising incomes the American people deserve. I don't want to transform America into something we wouldn't recognize. I want to restore to America the principles that made America the hope of the earth. chance to meet one of the world's heroes, Lech Walesa. And I, I came in to, to see him and uh, he looked at me and he said, uh, you came across the ocean from America, you must be tired. You sit, I'll talk, you listen. <laughs> and so I did. And, uh, and he began to speak and he said this, he said, where is American leadership? America is the world's only superpower. We need American leadership. This is essential for the world, it's essential for us. We need an America that's strong with strong families and strong values. We need to restore our conviction that the founders were right when they said that our rights came from God, not from government. that the pursuit of happiness, that means individuals pursuing their dreams, that that pursuit is what drives our economy. Our economy is driven by freedom, not by government. Freedom be, must be restored to build a stronger And so for America to remain strong, it begins with that foundation of con conviction in our principles.
principle, certainty that our cause is just. And then it moves on to making sure we have an economy second to none in the world. Growing, putting people to work, welcoming people from around the world, coming here legally to take advantage of the American dream. And then number three, not just strong homes and principles and a strong economy, but a military so strong no one would ever think of. sequester idea that came from the White House and which is cutting our military by hundreds of billions of dollars by hundreds of billions of dollars he would cut our military by a trillion dollars over this decade I will not cut America's military we must remain strong served in America's Armed Forces. Would you please raise your hand? Wow. These are America's best. Thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. You are heroes proved in liberating strife. But more than self, your country loved and mercy more than life. We appreciate the strength of our military. I will keep America's military strong. I will get our economy to be the power that made America the nation that it is. And I can tell you this, I will change Washington and I will do it from the inside when you elect me on November 6th.